What's up, everybody? This is Scott from NoLeftToMetal.com, and it's time for another Rock Metal Update. In this Rock and Metal Update, um, it's kind of a part two to this month because I just recorded a Rock and Metal Update just a few days ago, actually, and it's uh, posted on SMF Captain Howie's channel. Um, it was a report of what I picked up in Canada, um, but it wasn't everything because, uh, first of all, it was we didn't do it at the end of the trip. It was towards the end of the trip, but we, we hit another couple record stores after that. Uh, when I picked some more stuff up, and uh, I didn't show everything in that video anyhow. So, um, there's going to be more stuff that I picked up from Canada. Check out the video on Captain uh, Howdy's channel, which I'll put a link to below or above, somewhere, uh, if you want to see that video. Uh, otherwise, this is going to be a rock and metal update for stuff I picked up in the last month or so, um, including some that I picked up in Canada. Uh, a few of these I may have shown already uh, in that video too, but I'm not 100%, I can't remember 100%, but we're going to start off with some metal. So, what do we got here? Man of War. Hail, hail to England. Hail, hail, hail. Love this record. Um, this is one of those ones I just loved since I was a kid. Have it on CD. Now I have it on vinyl. Uh, I put a note in the back here because this was a gift from Kyle Johnson, who, um, as I, as far as I know, doesn't do VC videos, but is uh, a member as far as he watches other people's videos and comments on them. So. Uh, Apparently he, he saw this was high on my want list and snagged me a copy of it um, at a good price. And this copy here is in a pristine condition. Still has the uh, original shrink wrap on it, including a price from Rolling Stones Records for ten bucks. Uh, I probably will be removing the shrink wrap. I don't like shrink wrap on my records because it tends to warp them over time. Um, but this one was not warped and it played perfect. Um, favorite songs on here? <sighs> Hard to pick favorites, but I mean. You gotta love the bass solo, um, Black Arrows. Uh, may each note I now play be a black arrow of death. Step straight to the heart of all those who play false metal. <laughs> Man of War just funny, man. You, you gotta get the joke, I guess. If you don't get the joke, then you probably don't like Man of War. But, uh, um, Blood of My Enemies, Kill with Power. Die! Die! Yeah. Kill with Power, Hail to England, the title track. Um, Army of Immortals, which is the intro um, to uh, Black Arrows. And then the extended, uh, very long, uh, uh, what is it called, Bridge of Death. Um, you know, people say that Slayer and um, uh, Venom and bands like that are really dark. That song is really dark. Um, again, I, I kind of look at it as a joke. It's, you know, B-grade horror, that kind of thing. But anyhow, Man of War Hail to England. I gotta move on. Got a lot to show. Don't want to get stuck on one record for too long. So, what do we got next? Man of War, Sign of the Hammer. <laughs> and I think I may have shown this one in, one in the video on Captain Howley's channel. Regardless, uh, another Man of War record that was on my want list, and I picked this one up at uh, a place called the Quaker Barrel in um, in Ontario, Canada. And uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the town. I think it was Elmer. Regardless, this is a uh, second third album, second album I believe from, from Man of War and I mean you, you've got to love it. Uh, Death to false metal by the sign of the hammer. May the gods accept the yes offering in the name of Jay Burden and let his laughter be heard last. <laughs> I mean you know what? It's, 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 a, it's just silly and but I find it to be fun so uh, and I can understand why other people don't get the joke I can understand why people get upset by it and I can understand why people think it's so silly that you know they can't listen to it but regardless it's Man of War I love those early Man of War records uh, I have since I was a kid so uh, there you go uh, this one I also picked up in, um, uh, in when I was in, uh, out in London Ontario this is uh, Restless and this is uh, We Rock the Nation and I did show this one in that video however I hadn't heard it yet I had no idea what to expect um, this is a Here's the inner sleeve, band photos. It is on the Bonsai label. Um, and the sound here, I don't know, for some reason I was expecting kind of an AOR-ish hard rock sound, but it's metal. Uh, it kind of has that kind of Udo Accept kind of vibe to it. Um, I really dig it. So um, I picked up purely because it was on the Bonsai label, ended up digging it. So this is Restless, We Rock the Nation. And I know Metal uh, Theologian uh, said that you know, he didn't think that much of it. Hope you'll give it a second chance, Metal Theologian, and let me know what you think of it. Uh, moving on, this is um, one that I haven't even opened yet. Um, this is Exodus, Another Lesson in Violence, a double record, live record from the very first Exodus uh, reunion with Paul Bladoff on vocals. Uh, a little funny story about this record. When it first came out on CD, I, of course I bought it brand new. 
And I was listening to it in my room at the time. I was, you know, doing ultimatum full time. I was constantly, you know, doing ultimatum. Um, anyhow, I was um, playing this this CD in my room and uh, cr cranked up. My wife walks in. She goes, "When did you guys record that?" <laughs> she she was hearing Paul Bailout singing see these songs and she swore it was me singing. I'm like, "Honey, that's not me." She goes, "It sounds just like you." I said, "It's not me. It's Exodus." Oh, I would swore it was ultimatum. <laughs> so anyhow, um, you know, people accuse us of ripping off Exodus. Never once even tried to rip off Exodus, but apparently there is some similarities because even my wife thought it was me uh, uh, was me singing on this album. So uh, another lesson in violence. This is 180 gram limited edition. It's on colored vinyl. I actually I haven't actually uh, looked to see what color these are yet. A um, little ode to uh, Aaron here. We're gonna do a little jeans trick. Pop this sucker open and see what we got in here. So what do you call this? A seal to reveal. Seal to reveal. Come on out of there. There we go. Looks like it's going to be on a green. Yep. Green vinyl. Not marvelous. Not marble. Just straightforward uh, green. See through. So very cool. Uh, feels like it's 180 gram vinyl. And I think the sticker on the front said so. Yep, 180 gram vinyl. So haven't spun the, the record yet. Obviously, I just opened it, but I will be spinning it soon. And I, and I do. I love this live album. Kind of wish they would have done more than just the first album, but it was with Paul Playoff. So although it did pleasure the flesh on that record too. So anyhow, moving on. Um, keeping up with the thrash metal scene. This is Possessed. It's a reissue of Seven Churches album. This is um, on Century Media. Back on Black. Um, it's the gatefold, one of the early purveyors of death metal. Um, I don't know, I don't really hear death metal in this, I hear thrash metal. So, uh, call it what you will. I picked this one up at uh, Sonic Boom Records in um, Toronto for $20 Canadian, which works out to be about, I think, $17 US. Not a bad price for a brand new record, uh, which is why I picked it up. Next up, new album from The Darkness. Um, English, pop, hard rock, heavy metal, whatever you want to call it. Uh, people don't really seem to like this band very much, especially in the VC for some reason, but I dig them. Um, I always have. I've liked them since their very first album. Over the top, crazy vocals. Another green vinyl. This is more of a minty green color, and this is not see-through. It's opaque. So anyhow, uh, really digging the new album. It come with a, came with a download card, which I used immediately. Uh, threw it on my computer at work so I could check it and listen to it while I was working. Sounds like the darkness to me. Um, not quite as over the top vocally as like the first two albums were, but still sounds like the darkness. So, Last of Our Kind, 2015 release from the darkness. Uh, one I picked up here in Albuquerque. This is Marillion Brief Encounter, and of course this is not metal. This is your um, proggy AOR hard rock kind of stuff. Uh, this is a five song EP. Um, called Brief Encounter. I, I really don't know much about this EP. Uh, I saw it there, it was five bucks, I snagged it. Uh, it looks in great condition. I'm assuming it's some kind of compilation because um, they had, they were getting some recognition in the mid 80s and um, early 80s in, in, New, Mex in New Mexico, in the United States. <laughs> and I'm assuming this was uh, released to kind of push the back catalog. And it features songs from Script for a Jester's uh, Tear, uh, Fugazi, and this place, Childhood. So there you go. And I swear a couple of these songs are live. I did listen to this once, like, but it was, you know, weeks ago that I listened to it. And I can think a couple of tracks on here are live as well. Some of you Marillion heads, uh, let me know what you think of this record and what you know about it. So, there you go. Brief Encounter. Uh, this next one is another one that's not having been opened yet. This is the um, new album from Udo, Decadent. Uh, I snagged this up on, uh, I, I buy everything Udo. I love Udo's voice. I love his band. Uh, he's always been true to metal and... This is just a fantastic record from him. This is a clear vinyl edition. Um, it's limited to 500 copies. Whether it's only 500 copies pressed or just 500 clear vinyl copies, I don't know. Um, regardless, this is the new album, and I'm, I actually haven't spun this one yet, but I have heard this one, and I, of course, it's Udo, so I dig it. So, uh, new Udo, Udo Decadent, another 2015 release. Uh, next one up is an oldie but a goodie. This is a. Uh, October 31st, Meet Thy Maker. This is an original pressing, not the repressing from recent. This is on um, Metal Blade Records uh, under license from Metal Blade to Metal Supremacy. Um, this one was limited to a thousand copies. 
Um, classic King Foley heavy metal. You know, King's more known for Deceased. For me, I just like uh, October 31st a little bit better than Deceased. Nothing wrong with Deceased, I like them too. Um, more, you know, they're more thrash, death metal, punk. This is more straightforward heavy metal. This is on a purple vinyl. Uh, at least I assume that this is the original release. Um, I haven't actually seen the repressings. It doesn't say anything on here about, you know, 2015 or 2014. Um, so I'm not, I don't think it was a repressing. And I picked this one up on, uh, actually on eBay. I got this one, uh, bid the minimum on it, and I won. So every once in a while you get lucky on eBay. Uh, this next one was a gift from uh, Rock Russia. This is Sammy Hagar. A little rap, a lot of rock and roll. And this is a promotional radio pressing which features interviews and music from Sammy Hagar. Um, it is not a, uh, it is an official release, but it was a promotional only thing. Um, not mint condition. It's got a little bit of a tear over here. There's probably a sticker there or something. I can't tell what it was, but uh, it's got a little bit of ring wear, but it plays great, and it's not one of those things you run into all the time at record stores. So, Sammy Hagar, a little rap, a lot of rock and roll. Um, this was actually a gift from uh, from SMF Captain Howdy when I was out in Ontario, um, Canada, and this is Triumph. And this is, um, uh, <laughs> I think it's just, I think it's just a self-titled. Let me just make sure. Because uh, I always mix the self-titled and the second album up because it's such a... That album has been released in so many different combinations, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, so this is just this is just called Triumph. So this is supposed to be their first record, but it really isn't. It's a combination of their first two records, um, which is how it was released in the U.S. And this here is a... Um, is this a Canadian pressing? I believe it is. It's on Attic Records. I believe this is a Canadian pressing. Uh, but I always like this cover. Fantastic cover art. Um, I think I like it best of any of the covers from that, you know, those first two albums with a combination of those two albums. Um, Rock and Roll Machine and Self-Titled Triumph. This is on RCA Records. Oops. <laughs> RCA Records, there's the center ring on the green RCA label. Uh, and this was out of his collection. And he had received some VCLT from somebody. Um, he got a Japanese pressing of that, so he gave me his... Canadian pressing, so very cool of, of the cap to hand that over to me. Um, this is a pickup in from the Village Idiot in uh, uh, let's see, it was London, Ontario, and uh, this is Nazareth, the Catch, one that I was missing, one of the few Nazareth records I was missing from my collection, and this album is it's just in near perfect condition. Um, it is used, but I found anything in that store to be almost perfect. The record's in perfect shape, and of course it's on a and Records, which is normal for them. This is a Canadian pressing. Um, Nazareth, the catch, kind of uh, not as heavy as the uh, some of the 70s and early 80s stuff. A um, little more poppy, but that was the nice thing about 70s bands and the, and the early 80s bands, is they weren't trapped into one sound, you know? They didn't have to have every album sound like the last album. Um, anyhow, there wasn't any big hits on that album that I remember any, either, so... Which is fine with me because I'm not, you know, big into hits. I'm more of a listen to the whole album kind of guy. So uh, I showed in the last video with Cap um, a few Max Webster albums that I picked up. Well, on my last last day there, I picked up the last two I needed to complete the collection. This is uh, Live Magnetic from Max Webster. Live Magnetic Air, excuse me. Uh, their live album from 19. Let's see if there's a date on here because I don't remember the date on this one. 1979. Um, and I have not heard this one yet. Uh, I do like Max Webster, but like a lot of these Canadian hard rock bands from the 70s that I've been showing in recent videos, I'm fairly new to this stuff. Um, as much as, you know, I, I have, you know, as you see my No Let to Metal site and the thousands of releases I have on it, you can't know everything. So anyhow, Max Webster is kind of a new one to me, um, but I'm looking forward to checking this one out. Uh, again, this was bought at the Village Idiot in fantastic condition. Uh, this one as well was also bought from the Village Idiot. This is the very first Max Webster in the original Canadian pressing on um, Anthem Records, which is, of course, I believe, Russia's label. Um, and this is the, um, so the Anthem label. And um, this is the Canadian cover as well. Uh, this one actually was released in the U.S. too. I, I, I could be wrong on the record label. I think it was a &M Records. Uh, but it has a completely different cover. It does have one of these blockhead guys real big in the middle. Um, completely different. And I actually have a copy of that coming in the mail. So 
uh, there you go, Max Webster's first album from 19, uh, let's see there's a date on here, I think it was 75 or 74, yeah I don't see a date on here, 75, I was correct, 75. Uh, one last record um, to show. This is um, from 1978. Um, this is Tease, and this is another one I picked up while I was in Canada. Um, this is uh, kind of your uh, Kiss, Ted Nugent style, 70s hard rock, heavy metal, um, and a fan great release. Um, and like I said, I may have shown this one too in, in the video I did with, with the cat, but um, I hadn't heard it yet. Now I've heard it, and I can guarantee this is, oops, insert. <laughs> This is a fantastic record. Um, if you're into that kind of, you know, Ted Nugent's um, Kiss style, American heavy metal, T's are right up your alley. I mean, it sounds like an 80s glam band, but it's more of a 70s heavy metal hard rock band. So, um, and here's the insert that I just dropped. I highly recommend it. And I kind of wish I had picked up more while I was there. And I picked this up on the recommendation of Martin Popoff out of his uh, Heavy Metal Collector's Guide from the 70s. Um, and I, we saw other Tease albums there. I'm like, you know, I'm not buying more until I hear this one first. Um, good stuff. So you guys see any Tease records? Highly recommend it. Uh, and then, uh, these aren't records, but I saw show these real quick too. I do collect some old 70s and early 80s, um, or any 80s, uh, Heavy Metal magazines. Really depends on who's on the cover. Uh, if I buy them or not, but these ones I couldn't pass up. This is Hip Freighter from 1976 with uh, Jimmy Page on the cover. Fantastic photo of Jimmy Page. And then there's articles on Kiss. Uh, and this is from 1976. This is just after Kiss had started taking off, so they hadn't become the mega stars that they became, you know, by 1977 and 78. So it's kind of talking to them about, uh, you know, what they would become yet. They were still hungry and, 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 and striving for that mega band status, which they would soon achieve. Um, and it also has an article on Genesis and Bad Company. Uh, just a cool issue of Hip Raider from 76. This is a Kiss. Um, I forget who put this out. Uh, da, 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 da. Rock Scene Spotlight Kiss Guitarist. This is from 1989. It has articles on all the different guitarists from Kiss. Oddly enough, you don't see Paul Stanley on the cover anywhere, considering he's you know the one guitarist for Kiss who's been there since the beginning. But uh, there is an article in there about him. This is more about the lead guitarist from Kiss. Um, you know, Vinnie Vincent and Mark St. John and Bruce Kulick and of course Ace Frehley. Uh, very cool magazine from 1989. I picked this up at a, can't remember, it was, it was uh, some antique store I found it. And I think I got it for, it says six dollars in here, actually I think that's what it was. Oh, and it's the name of the store. It was one of a kind in Woodstock. Six dollars, you, uh, six dollars Canadian, so it was probably about five twenty-five U.S. Thought it was worth picking up. And this one here, um, I also grabbed, this is a 90's Reunion Kiss magazine. Uh, and it has uh, the complete kiss inside the hottest band in the land. This is what from '96 when they were they had just gotten back together, uh, and there was so much hype for the band. And I think I picked paid like five or six bucks for this one as well. Um, and then I got this one on one of a kind in Woodstock as well. So there you go. So that's it. That's my uh, somewhat short <laughs> and sweet uh, rock and metal updates. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. You know some of the stuff I didn't know about. So if you do. You know, please leave a comment below and let me know what you know. Um, and that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, upcoming videos, I've got, um, I'm going to be doing some more What's Spinning. I'm going to do another edition of the Christian Metal since I've been requested of it. Uh, I'm going to be doing a, a Death Metal one since that was also requested of me. Um, two people have asked me to show more obscure Thrash Metal, so I'm going to start doing some, some Thrash Metal exclusives. And uh, coming up in the not too distant future, I'm hoping to do 1983. Uh, in 1971, again with the Trog. So uh, that's it. God bless. Stay strong.